Starting off, I'll talk about Q3. If you guys follow Andrew on Twitter, you follow me on Twitter, you guys know that uh, a lot of tweets have been around uh, how September 30th is the uh, FCC's final fiscal uh, quarter deadline, right, for, for actual campaign donations. Uh, Andrew Yang's goal was 1.5 million, which is a pretty aggressive, which was a pretty aggressive uh, uh, total. And about a week ago, we were nowhere near that. Actually, we were around 30 thousand dollars. And I remember being at that point, seeing that on Yang 2020, and being really disheartened by it. A huge reason I was disheartened by it was because I knew uh, that the big media news circling around the candidates was that Cory Booker had recently really, uh, released a kind of desperate email discussing how their campaign needed more funds to actually continue going on. Because if not, they would be uh, in fear of actually dropping out of the race. Um, Buttigieg also seems to be really kind of uh, worried about some of his uh, donors and also the amount of um, traction he's getting. So he was sending out some friends and emails as well. And that being the big story, I saw Andrew's kind of lack of traction when it came to actual donors kind of worrisome. But I noticed that as Yang Mentum has continued to be to pick up these days, he, his campaign numbers quickly grew, the actual money he was bringing in. And as I'm recording this right now, we still have tomorrow for the actual deadline, and he is at 1.3 million dollars. That's insane. So as all these other candidates, you know, I've been saying this for a couple of videos now, as they've been kind of getting stagnant and not really growing, you're seeing Yang continue to go up after Yang Mentum. And a lot of that, as I've discussed, is because he has that high conversion rate. As people hear about Andrew Yang, they were really quickly uh, able to come join the Yang gang because they find his ideas easily consumable and actually they make sense. Other candidates, their ideas seem to be a little bit more partisan, so you see this divide. So when you hear about his ideas, you immediately go, hell no, or like, okay, fine, I'll listen more. Andrew, on the other hand, likes to bring out of ideas that aren't really political, and that way you bring in this huge general audience that uh, finds the message kind of attractive. So yeah, let's talk about Q3. So yes, he hit, he's gonna hit today, definitely. 1.5 million dollars, and on his Instagram live videos, he was talking about how uh, th this would be a big deal for the campaign. He wants to do a lot with his money. And when you look at um, kind of the success of some of the candidates in the early states, you notice something that stands out. Tom Steyer has consistently been hitting around 5% in the early states, where nowhere else, uh, anywhere else in the country, right? Tom Steyer has barely any attraction anywhere else, and no one's taking him seriously, but he's doing really well in the early states because he's spending the most on campaign money. He's spending the most on advertisements. That should be direct proof that money factors into votes and polling, right? And I'm not saying that Andrew's uh, goal should be, you know, I spend X amount of money, I get X amount of votes, but it does mean something when you spend, like, more money than your other candidates. So I'm saying financially, we need to help him out, and that's by donating, joining in 2020, and chipping in as much as we can. As a poor college student, you know I can't chip in too much, but I do what I possibly do what I can. Um, so yeah, that's a huge reason as to why money is important, and for him, 1.5 million was a huge point they wanted to reach, and I think to them, that's enough to actually make a big difference in the early states, so I'm really glad that we're able to hit that number. Uh, 